Manchester by night, but it's a good morning. It is a super good morning from super clear, super cold Manchester at 5.55 in the morning. Now, to be out in the city at this time, you've got to wake up at a ridiculous hour. And uh, I wanted to see how the city is coping with the first hard frost of the winter, of the season. And my first impressions are there's nobody about, nobody is sleeping rough that I can see so far because it's literally too cold. And another thing that surprises me at this time of the morning is uh, how busy it is. There's a lot of activity, uh, not of uh, crackheads, just of people getting started with their day. I've already been stuck in a moron cluster. Oh shit, we're not allowed that way. Let me go over here. We're screwed. Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's Monday, the 21st of November, the 2111 22. And uh, we're back in Manchester, of course. Now, though it's dark and cold, the mood on the street is rather festive, as you can see. People are enjoying the Christmas markets. But every year in the newspaper, the traders moan. And maybe they're right to moan about the fees that the council charges them to, to place their stall here. And how hard it is to make a profit. The margins are very tight. Tiny margins, profit margins. So let's go into town. Let's go into the city. Deep into the... Come on, say something, tree. Go on, tree. You know you want to with your shifty eyes. You are not a tram. 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 All the things she said, all the things she said, running through my head, running through my head. Now see this mural and the propaganda here. Now these are your only, these are your only two options. If you're not vegan, you're for animal cruelty. Only a retard deals in absolutes. I just remembered in about an hour, about half an hour, should we say, the England team in the Qatar World Cup 2022 are going to play Iran. I ran so far away. And I uh, hope England can make up for their, uh, well, their disaster at the uh, penalty shootout at the final of the Euro Championships. Maybe on the world they can do better. Now, let's just take a moment for the England fans in Qatar not allowed to have a beer in the stadium. Absolutely haram. Got to live in a little tin box in 30 degree November heat, which the sunshine warms it up during the day. The air conditioning doesn't work. All for £185 a night. Who would have thought that a tiny, tiny nation with no history of, of hosting giant uh, sporting events would be effing it up so wonderfully? I lived in Qatar, in Doha, for two years. From 1992 until 1994, my parents were working out there. And back in the early 90s, <coughs> it was pretty good. Let's turn the camera around. They're building flats. Yep, this is the back of Barclays. The joke is that, you know, you're going to buy an expensive million pound apartment and you got to step over the drunks, the fights, the stabbies, the crackies, the, you know, people who are struggling. But that's okay because you live in a big expensive apartment. Hey man, how are you? Good, I'm uh, filming the... No, no, I didn't, I made sure I didn't. I made sure I did I know you don't like it, so I made sure it was only them. I've got a lot of clips for you. You got some work for me? No, no, I've got a little clip for you. A clip for me? Yeah. All right, well, let me just pause the vid and then you can show me. I think the face coverings, the balaclavas on the armed police, give it that kind of, um, I don't know, Ukrainian death squad feel. 
All they need now are some Nordic runes on their badges and they'll be set. But just check this out. How weird is this as a, a scene? And unfortunately, very necessary. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you both sides of the story. One side is it brutalizes the markets. It's ridiculous having men with machine guns, or shall I say rifles, walking around with Glock 19s on the side, bulletproof vests. It's like people are like, whoa, what are they expecting? But on the flip side, the one day we don't have men like this patrolling will be the day that some really ridiculous atrocity happens and then we're, we're all arguing oh no you know we didn't act properly it's like well should have kept the armed cops on the street then so i can see both sides there's no right or wrong answer it's just it's just one of those things about the modern world which is quite distasteful unfortunately So what do you guys think in the comments section? Do we need armed police walking around or should they maybe stay in the car until the atrocity happens? I don't know. That's okay, go ahead, it's okay, it's okay. okay. It's all good, no, it's okay. Ukraine army backpack. Real occupation vibes in the Christmas markets. I see blue lights reflecting on the back of the purple bus. Something's gone on. We'll go and have a look. There's an ambulance parked outside the Manchester Civil Justice Centre. The courts, the civil courts. And the police Toyota as well. Has there been an incident in the civil courts? Not allowed! Looks perfectly natural. Looks like a video game. So we're here at the Crown Court. And it's a very interesting graffiti. CPS is Crown Prosecution Service. It's a young lady in a wheelchair, which means that they're not here for a medical incident. They're here for something else. Da, da, da. Love it. I just like the smoking is prohibited sign behind you. That's why I'm filming. It looks good with the official staff smoking next to the Smoking is prohibited. Huh? What? Go on, no one's gonna mind. No one's gonna mind. Does anyone here remember the Charlie the Arab incident? Or is it just me? If they're solid, how much would a cube of granite weigh? I'll give you some scale. Scale. A ton? More than a ton? I don't even know. Good morning. It is Tuesday, the 22nd of the 11th of the 22nd. The date is palindromic today. Everyone gets it right. Whatever date format you choose, the 2-2 of the 1-1 one -one of the 2-2. So I just want to say, first of all, I see a lot of worry, a lot of panic, not only in this country, but internationally as well. We see the ad what is that siren going on? I'm, as soon as I start shooting a, a better oh, it's an ambulance, loud one. In European countries, in America, Canada, whatever, yeah, Australia, people have noticed that over the last say 10, 15 years, especially the last 10 years, we're seeing a very, very noticeable, very profound, dramatic demographic change in the advertising and in the casts of television series, of Hollywood movies, of independent movies, uh, models and fashion magazines. You know, the move has been towards using a very large proportion of ethnic minority people, primarily, and have you noticed, people of a sub-Saharan African descent. Now, it's 
easy to look at that and see and I think there is an element of this because it's multifaceted and it's not just one simple answer there's many competing and also many correlating egos and uh, neuroses and psychological issues but I'll tell you it's not necessarily always an anti-white uh, great replacement let's wipe out the the native populations blah 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 what it is I've studied this very closely recently is that the masses of people the hordes out there are particularly xenophobic they are there's an element of racism to the masses and that's built in it's not that they've been taught that by their parents or by their society any primate is uh, wary of different genetics of uh, the other tribe the other platoon of apes and uh, human beings are no different than the other apes and so having come off the back of a few race riots in the north of England we've had issues uh, with uh, race riots down in Brixton as well in the 80s and then it was more uh, recently in uh, Rochdale or Rotherham I forget which raw uh, there was a, a big race riot about... Uh, and then at Oldham as well. There's the Oldham uh, race riots 20 years ago. Very violent. And so in order to convince the primate brain of the masses uh, what they're doing with television and Hollywood and advertising specifically is that they are giving a high status to ethnic minority human beings so that in the schools, so that in the, in the gyms, in the workplaces anywhere nights out your average native European uh, member of the masses working classes will not have that such an instinctive uh, you know genetic dislike for their sub-saharan African brethren for their Asiatic cousins for their whatever yeah and this works as well I'll come on to to the LGTV 4K propaganda in a second, but the morning. I'm in the middle of a rant. How you doing? All good. So, unfortunately, your average human being is ignorant and xenophobic, and particularly um, they have a very strong in-group preference against outsiders, and that's normal. That's built by by our evolution that's uh, you know biology evolution so people say that the pandemic response was the most incredible psychological warfare thing against the public but no it's actually the move to reshape the brains of the hominids in the masses and I've noticed this I'll give you just a few personal anecdotes or maybe even just one we're here above the Mark Addy now, which is now Crack Den. Crack Den extraordinaire. Utterly disgusting. When I first went to school in Scotland in uh, 1993, having lived in Brazil, Middle East, West Africa, always going to British schools, you know, oh, this is the British school. And then I get to Scotland, going to an actual British school in Scotland. The Most of the other kids were extremely nasty to me. I even got called the N-word with a hard R, with the R at the end, yeah? By the other kids, and they made me feel awful. So I've seen it firsthand, how, how discriminatory and nasty the, the ignorant children of ignorant people, and it's not even their fault, that's just the way their brain's built. They are a simple member of the masses. They are the proletariat. They are the oi polloi and so oh here's a perfect example Peterloo was a massacre that took place in the 1800s there wasn't a single black person involved but when they're doing art you've got a black mum with a black baby and remember if you're irked by this if you notice patterns and you're like oh where's all the white models at where's the white actors this country has a, has a black population of say 4% why are 50% of the people on television black? They are overrepresented 10 times. It's incredible. A thousand percent overrepresentation. It's because they're not replacing anyone. Nobody is telling 
blonde, blue-eyed, native European ginger people that they're not valid. They're just convincing the youth, the youth in it, the youth of the masses to stop being so xenophobic. And it is, it's social engineering. Whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, I'm not here to say that. Probably a good thing. The lack of racial strife, the lack of civil war, it's probably a good thing. But it does come across as weird. And then, as I was saying earlier, there's many different competing neuroses going to it. And then you get people who, who jump on the bandwagon. They're like, hey, this will wind up the right wing. This will wind up the conservatives or the Republicans. Let's make television 100% African. And then they jump on the bandwagon and it's one big messy, messy mess. Let's go into the city. We're in spinning fields. Here's my face face so hope you enjoyed the expose as to why there are so many ethnic minorities on tv they're not trying to replace you they're trying to stop the masses being so ooga booga ooga booga ooh, ooh. that's what they're trying to do now the more insidious the darker the more social engineering almost eugenic problem i see is the extreme and it is an extreme almost over the top it reminds me of a nuremberg rally during the third reich the amount of flags the symbols everywhere you look rainbow lgtv 4k the brown strips the transgender ones and again what it is we're, we're in a sort of great reset there's an awakening going on and it's not you know i'm going to come on to the world economic forum klaus schwab in a minute but People are waking up slowly as to what they are. We've had internet now, big internet for a quarter century now. Internet's been mainstream for a quarter century. And, you know, the old narratives, church, synagogue, mosque, whatever you have it, it's starting to not have the same effect. People don't sing from the same hymn sheet. They don't sing the same surahs. They don't read the same passages from the Torah. Torah? And so... Oh, I just dropped my phone. Oh my God, I caught it. <laughs> so as we pass the Manchester Crown Court, oh, where is it? No, behind, oh, there, there, that's better, Manchester Crown Court. You've been caught, you gotta go to court. You've been caught. Now, the incel movement is very closely related. They are the bastard cousin of the LGTV 4K. Now, of course, by LGTV 4K, I mean, the LGBT Q plus plus double alpha star epsilon gamma ray x ray bob faced uh, bollock boy. You know, you know what I mean. LGTV 4K. It's a joke, of course. Now, incels are very closely to related because incels have taken the nihilism black pill because they do see how beautiful people get treated better. Beautiful people get away with things. Beautiful people don't have to make a big effort and suffer rejection when trying to find a sexual partner. Beautiful people get away with more crimes in court. They've done studies. Juries don't want to send beautiful people to jail. There was even a very beautiful mixed race man. He had blue eyes, chiseled jaw. He was the, the, you know, the handsome mugshot. He then went, now how's this for genetic privilege? Yeah, he was a felon, he went to jail, but he was so handsome that the daughter of the top shop, what's it called, Arcadia Group, Philip Green's daughter, Miss Green, a girl worth billions of pounds, went to the most privileged school, lives in penthouses in New York, London, Mayfair, Upper East Side, Soho, what have you. Who did she choose as her sexual partner to have babies with? The handsome American felon. So he went from hot wiring cars and smoking blunts to literally wearing a tuxedo, going to the Formula One and having babies with a billionaire. Now this is very relevant. This, this uh, tangent was relevant. Now in the past when church and synagogue and mosque was very powerful, Hindu temple, all that good stuff, the community would kind of arrange marriages, right? 
you're a five out of a ten in, in looks, you're gonna marry Edwina. She's a five out of ten. You're a you're a bit ugly, you're a three out of ten. You're gonna marry the girl next door who's also a three out of ten. And people would accept it because having babies with your looks match is better than not having any babies. And maybe it's good for the stability of society. But nowadays everyone's free, everybody's free to feel good. Tinder's a thing. I'm proud I've never even looked at Tinder. Don't have a clue about Tinder. I'm glad I missed that one. And uh, you now have, you know, it, the, the, we, it's gone back to harems, harems. It's gone back to, you know, your, your chads. Your 9 out of 10, your 8 out of 10, your 10 out of 10 athletic builds. They are, they have maybe 20, 30 sexual partners. So they are banging all the, 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 the women from the 3 out of 10s all the way to the 10 out of 10s, different days of the week. And girls nowadays, and I only go from what I see. I don't live this life. I'm not dating. I'm not in my 20s. I'm not in my late, late teens. So what do I know? I only see what I see, what people tell me, people that I know who are in their 20s, is that there are literally no girls for your non-handsome men now because they're too busy lining up for Chad. Chad's Tuesday night. He's had his, uh... anyway, I don't want to offend anyone with these videos. You know, I'm just trying to call it like I see it. Really trying to call it like I see it. And so the are, you know, people that run corporations, people that work in psychology, people that work in government, social engineers, propagandists, they're scratching their heads going, oh shit. We've avoided a race war with the, you know, giving high status to ethnic minorities, primarily sub-Saharan Africans. We've avoided that race war. But what about the incel war? What about the, the incredible violence when people wake up and realize that the game's rigged? The lottery of genetics is probably the most unfair one, you know. I don't want to say you shouldn't work hard. It doesn't matter what you look like. It's about your soul inside. But most people, the masses, that we're talking about the masses, you know, with average minds, feeble minds, normal minds, they just see it as rigged and unfair. A lot of them fall into Bolshevikism. Bolshevism, shall I say. Oh, I've never been around here. Here you've got the, the five pillars. Very important in that religion. <laughs> All right, basically the government and the corporations, which are together in one beautiful fascist corporate state, are again brainwashing the masses to accept a homosexual or a, a gender bending sexual relation. So they're saying, look, okay, Mr. Two out of 10 forever alone ugly boy, why don't you take some hormones, put a dress on, and then you can have loads of sex with loads of people like you? Because the Tinder and the kind of opening up of the dating game has left you forever alone. So when I see Harry Kane, is that his name? Henry Kane, wearing his uh, LG TV 4K armband, he's like, he loves the gays, he loves them. That everyone's wanting to wind up the Arabs, you know, those poor conservative muzzies in Qatar. I lived in Qatar for two years, 92 to 94, when my parents were working in the oil industry in Qatar and Doha. I went to Doha College, good old Doha College. <laughs> People are jumping on the bad one. They think it's being super kind. Oh, look at me. I have no bigotry or hate. I support the gays. I support the gays. But what they're doing, they're taking part in social engineering, which is to eugenically remove um, the two out of 10s, the three out of 10s, the four out of 10s, the average people from the genetic pool. I mean, Hitler couldn't have dreamed of this uh, eugenics program that's going on now. He couldn't, have, he couldn't have devised it. How easy it is. You don't even need to be violent. You don't even need to build a concentration camp. Just use the media. Just use Hollywood. That'll get people... <laughs> doing what they do. Thank you for again for this amazing 
nine minute rant. Let's go to the next one. The last ranty bit I want to say as we come up uh, John Dalton Street. Sir John Dalton. Is that uh, mortality rates have shot up around the world and uh, hello and baby <laughs> and baby birth rates have collapsed have a look at the Australian baby birth rate they've got official figures checked official correct figures in late 2021 about nine months after the start of I gotta be careful what I say Nine months later, baby births collapsed by 70% in Australia. 70% decrease in fertility. This is on top of the massively increased mortality rate. People, you know, safe and effective turns into sudden, sudden and unexpected. Draped over so that everyone knows who's in charge. This is actually the Unitarian Church, not utilitarian, unit. They, they, they're absolute Unitarian Church. Okay. And um, what I wanted to, um, where is, he's not going to come and tell me off, is he? There was a, a nightclub shooting in America. It appears to be a homophobic attack. I can't remember what state, what city. But there's like five or six dead. There's 23 injured. A crazy 22 year old went in there with a rifle and started shooting young gay people, partying. And the answer on Twitter or people in the, um, on the internet, they're saying we need more LGBT representation. We need more education for children around gender queer this gender queer that little cracky little munchkin boy throwing abuse at me so anyway I'm I've got to give the answer that unfortunately no the reason why so many crazy people are doing attacks there was that one in the pulse nightclub in florida people are worried they're seeing drag queens reading to children they're seeing weird rainbow colored books being promoted by strange brightly color haired strange people to little kids and the, the, the game was in the 80s and the 90s as long as i've been alive before it became a bit tragic was that grown-ups behind closed doors Nobody cares. Go nuts. Ancient Greeks were at it. Ancient Romans were at it. Just absolutely go nuts. But you made them mistake. Not you. The, they. It. The monster. The creature. It's afraid. Made a mistake when they started going into schools and trying to propagandize children with drag queen story hour thing. Can I help you? Good. How are you? I'm very good. What's this for? Uh, just for YouTube. Just doing a rant. You never recorded it yourself. I'm sorry? Come from me or you? Oh no, I like to include members of the public when they interact with me. Thank you. Name's Charlie Beach. Good luck. Thank you. He was going to have a massive go, but then the camera turned around and uh, people see someone speaking in front of the rainbow and they instantly think it's the, a bad thing. I'm even wearing my LG TV 4K trainers. And the uh, deranged uh, baldy has disappeared. WTF, bro. How does he get evicted from a shopping center and just disappear off the face of the earth? Well, he did. It's a female armed officer that I don't recognize. Is it a new one or has she dyed her hair? Maybe she's dyed her hair. Oh no, it's a different one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for keeping us safe and all the good stuff. His Majesty's Government, New Bailey. So what I want to know from my viewers, and I'll try and answer it myself, is is it ethical, is it morally okay for governments and corporations 
to use advanced psychological propaganda against the masses to alter their sexuality, to make them happy with this, to create racial harmony. I think it's complicated because on the one hand, people are individuals, every single person is the be all and end all, the alpha and the omega of their own universe. But we're all also in the same boat, which is society. We live in a society. We live in a society. So I, I, I work between the two. I mean, on one hand, I want to enforce the complete NPCization of the masses. Like, for example, these people, I'm glad that they're kept busy. Well, they work in an office, they come out for their hour of freedom for lunch, you know, gives their life structure and value. But on the flip side, as a rugged individualist, I see governments and corporations nowadays as nothing more than the farming of free range slaves. That's all it is. Farming, livestock, taxation, lowering birth rates, increasing certain things the way the system wants it. It is pointless to get mad at the traffic wardens, the parking attendants. It's literally not their fault. He-Man, cheer up, He-Man. Mr. Ryder. Why don't you tell it like it is? Okay, we'll tell it like it is. Let's see what uh, the... Anyway, see Tip Street right here. The young 25-year-old thug who punched a 62-year-old granddad in the head, putting him into a coma, which he is still in. That young scumbag has been caught, sentenced, and jailed. Got exactly what he deserves. And today, the police... Oh, look. Oh, oh, what's that? Rental cars. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Let it load. Let it load. Let it load. Let it load. Anyway, it's not going to load. What I was trying to say, so much for 5G. 5G should be, should be working, but it's... Yep, we're on 5G, but we're not getting a signal. Yo! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. So... The police are telling people during the holiday season not to give money to beggars. They're saying, please give it to homelessness charities. How do you feel? Yeah, mate. We are the people. You say to your mates, you're like, boys, let's go to the pub for a beer. You're like, yeah, you've had a beer. But because it's Manchester, your mates have, are clearly on something else. They're like, yeah, 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 I want another glass of water. The music's amazing. <laughs> I've been watching Samurai Jack. It's an animation. It's a cartoon. It's for kids. But there's a character in Samurai Jack called the Scotsman. And it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. Check out Samurai Jack, the Scotsman. <laughs> 